Rub up your engines! Well, Lucid, the electric car company, the other day their stock went up 43%, but it only went up 43% on a rumor. And the rumor is this, that the Saudis, who own a bunch of it, are going to buy the whole thing up and go private, which from the Saudis' perspective probably isn't a bad thing to do. If you put something that's as dramatic as a new electric expensive car on the stock market, the value of your company is going to go up and down like waves in the ocean, and you have no control over the value of your company. Now, on rumor alone, it became the third highest mover this day on an NASDAQ stock market. People go by rumors. It's ridiculous some of the crap that goes on. Now, of course, this isn't a long-term thing. The reason people are buying it is because they figure, oh, the price is going to go up because the Arabs are going to have to buy them all, so the price of buying these stocks is going to be higher, right? You can't hold on to it because it won't exist as a stock in the future. They want to go private, but to buy it all out. And if you know anything about history, in 2018, the Arab investors wanted to buy Tesla and make it go private, so you don't have to deal with the ups and downs of the stock market. But that fell through, and as it stands now, it's going to be a long time before this Lucid company is profitable, right? They delivered 4,369 cars last year. That's not very many cars, right? So they're a long way from being a profitable company. But if the Arabs looked at it long term, I'll give you a perfect analogy. When I lived in Houston, there were these giant condo high rises, right? And they tried selling them. No Nobody was buying them. The company went bankrupt. Who bought these condos? These Arabs bought the condos, and they just rented them out as apartments. Now, decades ago, when they bought the deal and started renting them, yeah, they were losing money. But guess what? The real estate in Houston came back, and now they're making a whole bunch of money on it. So, if you look at something in the long term, it's probably better for you to own it. It's not on the stupid stock market where it goes up and down and sideways, and you could run a company, get it profitable, and make money. Let's face it, the Arabs do not need investors. They have lots of money, right? The whole thing about the stock market is originally it started, people wanted to build their company up so they sold stocks so they could get bigger, right? Well, the Arabs have a lot of money. They don't need any more. Maybe it would be smart for them to go private with it. Nobody knows if it's going to happen. This is just a rumor. They asked the Arabs, they asked Lucid, they asked everybody, and they all had no comment, no comment. So to me, seems like it's just a giant myth to get the stock back up in the air, but it won't last long. Not if you're making 4,300 vehicles a year. You're not going to be profitable. Dead Man 1998 says, Scotty, my 2001 Honda Civic is running cold. The engine runs at about 145 degrees all the time. What could be the problem? Numero uno, do the simplest thing. It's very simple on Honda to change the thermostat, and it costs you like 10, 12 bucks. Get a thermostat and a gasket, take the old one out, throw it away, put a new one in. Get a Honda one because they're made for the cars. They're built better than the right temperature, right? It should go back to normal. It's probably partially stuck open, right? Now, if that isn't the case, and your car runs fine, it's probably that the gauge is giving you the wrong reading. As they age, they often will give the wrong reading. And in that case, you get a temperature sending sensor unbolted, bolted back on. If you don't know where it is, you can go to any place like AutoZone or Riley. They can show you where the sensor is, and they can sell you a sensor. And if you don't have a socket, sell you a socket that fits on it. You can take it out and put it in and replace it. Normally, it's just the thermostats, though. They will over time, and that's what? That's a 12-year-old Honda. It's time to change the thermostat anyways, because instead of open like yours would be, it breaks closed. It breaks closed, your engine overheats, so... It's a good idea to change them every once in a while. Ad Pack says, I got a rough idle when my brakes are pressed. I got a 2008 Toyota. When I stop and I press on the brakes, the car idles rough. I went to three mechanics. They can't figure it out. Oh, well, some mechanics they are. Numero uno. You step on the brakes, the car starts shaking when you're stopped. If you take your foot off the brake and it stops shaking, it's a vacuum system. It takes vacuum pressure from the engine. And as they wear out, the brake booster itself sucks too much vacuum pressure because it's leaking. So the loss of vacuum pressure in the engine causes it to stumble at idle. Not a cheap fix. You got to replace the brake booster, and they're relatively expensive. But let's say you take your foot off the gas, it's still shaking at idle. Could be a lot of things you can have. If it's an automatic transmission, it can be that your torque converter is wearing. If that's the case, shift it from drive into neutral. And if it stops shaking, then you got a bad torque converter. It can also be motor mount, transmission mount, weak fuel injectors. A lot of things can make it shake. But if it only happens to have your foot on the brake and you take it off, it's the brake booster. J.S. Lewis 67 says, what truck should I buy for my daughter? She wants an F-150 with a budget of 7K. I prefer a Tundra. Is a Tundra with 230,000 miles a better truck mechanically than an F-150 with 180,000 miles? Yeah, I agree with you entirely. I would buy a Toyota 
Tundra with 230 over a F-150 with 180 because the Tundras just last longer. For example, an F-150 with 180. 80. The transmission is either worn out or going to wear out soon. I've seen Tundra transmission with 450 and it's still the original tranny and shifting good. I've never seen a Ford go that far. You got to replace the transmissions on the Fords by then. All things considered, if you checked out both cars, they both checked out to be good. Scan tool mechanics says they're good. I would go for the Toyota before I'd go for the F 150, especially if there's the same price. Generally, you get the, the Fords used a lot cheaper, and that's why people buy them more because they're a lot cheaper. The Tundras keep their value way more than the F 150s do. Damien Pesor says, Scott, I hope you're doing great. Have you ever heard of a Chrysler TC by Maserati? I heard they're horrible cars. I saw one driving down the road the other day. Well, that's amazing. I very rarely ever see them driving. I see them in junkyards. I see them in people's garages and pieces. What it was is for a very short period of time, Chrysler owned Maserati, and they decided they were going to build a car that they called the Chrysler TC by Maserati, and it was one of the biggest piles of crap ever made. It was so bad that a guy brought me one once. So I'm jacking it up. I'm looking, and I'm like, look at that. This is how absurd this car was. It had dual exhaust, right? A pipe on each side, but one was fake. You looked and there's a pipe and part of the stuff and then it, it doesn't go to anywhere. It just ended. It was a single exhaust and they put a fake dual one on it. And in the case of his, the brakes are going out and it had one of these stupid boost systems and nobody even had the parts to fix them anymore. The guy thought he got a good deal buying it for a thousand bucks. Well, he ended up sending it to a junkyard. He couldn't drive it without brakes and he couldn't get parts to fix it. So yes, they were rolling piles of junk. Randy Ramirez says, in December, I had my starter replaced in my 2.4 Honda Accord, 130,000 miles. I paid him 400 bucks parts and labor. Was that reasonable? Yeah, it is for a mechanic because those stupid starters, that was a dumb design. Well, you got to take the intake off of the Honda in order to get to the starter. I don't know why they made it that way. Older Hondas were much easier and a lot of the more modern ones are easier. But for some reason, that engine design, the 2.4 four-cylinder, they decided to make it so you had to take the intake manifold off to get to the starter, then put it on, put them another one on. And you're lucky it lasted 130,000. I've seen those Honda starters go out at 60. They make good cars, but they make crappy starters. Iconic Thrive. So I got a 2017 Grand Cherokee 3.6 cylinder, two misfire. Dealership chain, spark plugs in a coil pack. Month later, the same misfire. What else could it be? It could be there's a vacuum leak near that cylinder. Check for vacuum leaks. Put a smoke machine on if you got one or spray carburetor cleaner around there. If it starts to rev up, you know there's a leak. Find where the leak is and fix it. It could also be a bad fuel injector on number two because just because it says misfire, that just means that the computer through the crank and the cam sensor sees it's not firing correctly correctly inside the engine. It can be an ignition problem. It can be a fuel problem. It can even be a blowing head gasket on cylinder number two. Pray it's not that. To test that, you do a dry and wet compression test of the cylinders. And if you found cylinder number two had bad pressures, it means you have to rebuild the engine, take it apart, which is very expensive. Pray it's a fuel injector and not something like that head gasket going out. It could even be a computer failure that the computer isn't driving either the spark plug on that cylinder or driving the fuel injector correctly. Everything's computer running. It can get complicated. Pray it's something simple, like a dirty fuel injector. Have them pressure clean. Pray it's something that simple. Wretched Rider says, just back from London and Paris, diesels are everywhere, despite their ultra low emission zones. We can rest easy about EV by 2030. Yeah, isn't that the truth? For those of you who don't know, in Europe, they're trying to say, by the year 2030, we're going to stop the sale of gasoline and diesel cars, blah, 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 right? Well, I also read an article in England that they're supposed to have built 300,000 something charging stations by the year 2030. And they said at the rate that it's going, it's going to be 2050 before they build that many charging stations. So you know it's not going to happen. The English people now are not buying the electric vehicles like they thought they would. Look, they can build something, but at least here in the United States, they can't force you to buy a piece of crap, right? That's the one thing about a capitalist society. They can't force you to buy a piece of crap. Like let's say you were in East Germany after World War II when the Russians took over, then the government would say, you're going to make this many shoes, this kind of shoes, and you had to buy those shoes because those are the only shoes they had. Well, we have a lot of choice here, so you still have some choice, I'm sure, in Europe and in the United Kingdom. And you also, I believe, have elected officials who can be thrown out and you can put new officials and they can change the laws. They're just laws. They're just ideas. They're not set in stone. <laughs> it's not like, you know, the Ten Commandments, they were carved in stone. No, these are legislator stuff that can change as the wind blows. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.